Greetings. In the next few tutorials I will go over the issues of internationalization and localization. For this video I will give you a simple introduction of Zend translation. So because it's only introduction don't be afraid of the fact that it's incomplete. The point of Zend translate is to set up a bunch of placeholders on your page with the message IDs and then have Zen Framework look up these message IDs in a translation file to pick the appropriate translation. Now what that means is that if you haven't prepared your page for the Zen Translate you may have to go back to each and every one of your views and replace the content with a Zen Translation placeholder. The second point is the fact that because it's only a message ID that is being displayed, you may not necessarily have to put the entire string into the view. Um, well, actually, what some people do is simply put the message ID in a number format. So this would be, for example, uh, message number one, this would be message number two, although it's a bit difficult to keep track of. Uh, but um, you generally do not want to put a massive output string inside of a Zen Translate placeholder. And you will see why is that the case when we create our translation file. Zen Translate supports many formats and you can even make your own. Uh, the ones I will concentrate on is the GetText which is um, a standard for Unix platforms and just about every other application. All of them work almost identical. There is a message ID that gets looked up in the translation file, be it comma separated value, qt, ini, whatever, and the, mes the real message behind that message ID is being returned. So it's almost like a um, key value lookup in a database. Okay, so I'm going to prepare one of my views for the translation. So I don't really have any verbal output in this list, uh, so I'm going to create one. And usually I could just do You know, something that simple. Okay, so if I just save that, I am going to have the word books displayed as expected. Okay, so there is the books ready. But if I want to be able to translate the word books into other languages, I am going to have to encapsulate it in a translate message ID. So I'm going to use the translate. view helper and create the message ID like that. Actually I may want to take the semicolon out of there because it's not really a part of the text to be translated. You only want to have the strings in the translate that are not going to be identical to all languages such as the colon it's pretty much the same in all languages um, there will be cultural differences for example time and money and that will be covered by the uh, Zen locale so um, for now we're just concentrating on the change of the string but I haven't really set up the view helper so I have to set up the Zen translate helper to accept my language and there is many many ways to do that. A lot of developers do it through a controller or controller plugin so that the language is initialized at the beginning of every controller call 
I find it also convenient to do so a bootstrap. You can bootstrap the module or you can bootstrap the whole application. And you may want to bootstrap the module to save some resources if the translation is necessary only for a section of the application. In my example, I want to do a per module translation. That is, I'm going to only set up translation for the library module. But the procedure is identical to the overall application in bootstrapping. And a lot of the code is, again, identical for the translate if you want to do this in a controller plugin as well. So here is my bootstrap for the library. Uh, I'm going to create a init function set translations okay and because I am in a module bootstrap instead of the application bootstrap I'm going to have to get the applications bootstrap to be able to get the objects in order to get the view objects not necessary if you are in application bootstrap uh, now I want to grab the layout Uh, so basically that's identical to what I have here. Now I'm going to create an actual translate object. And the first parameter is one of the adapters that you want to use. In my case it's get text. And now you need to specify the directory of the translation file. And it needs to be a full path from the file system's point of view. Okay, so at this point let's discuss where we can put our translation files. Uh, there is a number of suggestions on the Zen documentation so whatever your requirement is uh, the directory structure chosen also influences the way Zen Translate automatically detects languages so um, you can have the folder with a language name or you can have the extension with the language name or have the language name as a part of the file name um, many variations I am going to go with uh, something generic. I'll just call, uh, I'll just create a folder called languages in the application. And I'm going to have a separate file for each language. Now uh, you will find that uh, GetText saves its translations in a .mo format. So what I've done here is pointed to the Russian translation and I've set the name of the language that is going to use this translation file. So it's basically the adapter, the location of the translation file, and the language that uses that translation file. 